Hello, I'm Jo. I'm a teacher at Twinkle. This is the third in a series of five videos where we read an ebook called How to Skin a Bear. Now, in the story so far, B, the youngest member of a Stone Age tribe, has sprinted off into the dark storm in search of her dog, Dog. Her dad called after her, but she had a moment of panic and dilemma and ran off. And that's where we left her at the end of chapter two. So in each of these videos, we look at a different skill every time. And the skill we're going to be looking at today is discussing effective words and phrases in the text as we read chapter three, which is called I have done a few things wrong. I'm lost, really lost, really, really lost. Ow! I hear it faintly through the trees. Is that dog? It's nearly daylight. I've been chasing him all night, at least. I've been chasing the howling sound all night. I hope it's dog. I stop and whistle like I've seen the elders do on hunts. But dog doesn't come. Wind and rain strike me from every side. I might as well not be wearing furs. I'm so wet that I'll probably never be dry again. I haven't seen or heard the tribe in an age. But who cares about them? They wanted me to leave dog behind. I'll stop reading now and we'll just have a look at that paragraph at the top of page 21. Here's a question for you to think about and write down the answer. What does B mean when she says that she might as well not be wearing furs? Pause the video and write your answer down. Well, she means that she is so wet that the furs are wet through and they're now doing nothing at all to keep her dry. And what does the sentence in that same paragraph at the top of page 21? But who cares about them? What does that tell the reader about how B's feeling towards the tribe? Pause the video and write your answer down. Well, you might have written that B is feeling angry with the rest of the tribe because they wanted her to leave dog behind. Let's read on. I stumble into a clearing. Although I frantically scan the area around me, I don't recognise anything. Snore of the rat would be able to tell where he was just by seeing a knot in a tree trunk or a funny shaped rock. I wish that I'd been taught to navigate. That twisted branch might mean that I should walk south for seven days. Those tangled roots could be telling me to go east until I reach a river, then south until three bats fly overhead. That grumpy looking bush might be suggesting that I spin three times on the spot, whistle for a ride, jump on the back of the next oryx that comes along and trot off into the sunset. But how would I know? No one bothered to teach me how to navigate. Your job is plucking feathers, Bee. Just stick with the tribe and you'll be all right. Ow! There it is again. Dog's howl. Where is it coming from? My brain feels tangled. I shake my head hard from side to side. Sometimes when I do that, clever thoughts fall out. This time, my thoughts are not helpful, but come thick and fast. One, why am I following the howling sound? It might not even be dog. It might just be the wind in the trees. Two, or a wild animal that wants to eat me for dinner. Three, uh-oh. Four, I'd better move quick. I start to run. I am totally, utterly, absolutely lost. My lungs burn like fire and the soles of my feet are full of cuts and grazes from accidentally standing on things in the dark. Oh! Five. Maybe that noise is just the sky spirits messing with me. After all, they must be very angry to send a red sun and a stonking storm all in one day. Six. What's scarier, wild hungry animals or angry sky spirits? Seven. I better keep running. I've got no food, no water, no tent, and no idea where my tribe is. I haven't even found dog. Oh, pig's bladder. If I don't find somewhere warmish and dryish soon, I'll become a human swamp. I'll stop reading again, and we'll have a look at the paragraph that I just read. 
what is the effect of repeating the word no in the sentence, I've got no food, no water, no tent, and no idea where my tribe is? Pause the video and write down your answer. Well, when we repeat things, we want to really emphasise them and make a big point about them. So the repetition of no emphasises how negative B is feeling and how many problems she has at this point in the story and how she has none of the things that are listed. Now, in that same paragraph again, what does B mean when she says she'll become a human swamp? What do you think a human swamp would be like? Pause the video and write your answer down. Well, here's an example answer. A swamp is a bog or a marsh. So a human swamp would be a, a human that is very wet, probably quite muddy, as swamps tend to have a lot of mud in them too. So the author's using language there to compare something else to B. So a swamp and a human swamp B would become. Let's read on. The wind rushes through the clearing and the trees wag their fingers at me. I shiver and my skin goes all bumpy like duck skin. I look up at the sky and wonder if the sky spirits are watching me. But why would they? It's not like I've ever done anything wrong, except for when I complained about plucking the duck and when I ran after dog, even though dad said to stay with the tribe. And there was also that time that I borrowed the flint spearhead that dad had been shaping and chopped off all my hair without asking. Oh, and that other time when I carved a picture of dog into the side of dad's drum, drum only he said it didn't look like a dog at all, more like a pig with belly ache. OK, so I've done a few things wrong. I still need to find dog, though. I start tramping uphill, but I'm tired, really tired, totally, properly, really tired from being awake all night. My heavy eyelids begin to droop. I can't help it. Desperately, I try to open my eyes wide and stare. I even hold my eyelids open with my fingers. When I realise that this simply won't work, I pick up some short sticks from the forest floor and attempt to prop my eyelids open with them, but I just poke myself in the eyeballs. Eventually, despite all my efforts, I'm walking with my eyes closed. That's how I fall into the hole. My foot slides and I tumble face first, banging my head on something hard. There is a white flash and then darkness. I open my eyes. It feels like only a moment has passed, but the rain has stopped. Strange. I'm cold, covered in mud and my head is splitting. Not to mention that I'm in a hole in the ground with no way out. The hole is like a long, thin passage in the rock. The walls on either side are at least one, two, three, four, five times my height and covered in moss and ferns. I run my hands over them looking for handles and handholds, but all I feel is slime. My head throbs, water drips. I try to walk all quiet and sneaky, but it's impossible when every footstep makes an enormous squelching sound. After five more strides, I stop. I can hear something a splashing, snuffling something. I freeze. It could be a wolf or a boar or a bear. If I don't move quickly, I'm going to be something's dinner. I run. My head nearly explodes from the intense pain, but I don't care. My feet sink into the mud, but I heave them out and keep on running. Even the elders are scared of things like bears. No one has faced anything that big alone and survived since Glinting Fang killed a cave lion. I run and run, dash round a corner, and then I see it. A tree trunk, as big as an orax, blocks the passage. There's no way around it. The sound is becoming louder. There is no other way. I'll have to climb. The tree is covered in slimy green moss. Desperately, I throw my arms up and dig my fingernails into the moist bark. My hands slip, my feet slide, and I fall back into the mud. My head pounds like a banging drum. I'm not going to die because of a bit of slime. I jump up at the trunk once again. My belly skids across the moss covered trunk and before I know it, I'm tumbling over the other side. Frantically, I try to grab the thick trunk, but it's much too slippery. Losing control, I slide right over the top and roll in the cold, thick mud. 
Ouch, I cry, rubbing my sore head. The light blacks out for a moment. I can't tell if it's the sky spirits nesting again or just because my head is all funny. Something scrambles and whines nearby. I have to move. Right ahead of me is a little nook in the rock, just high enough and deep enough to hide a bee-sized person. Peeling myself out of the sludge, I crawl inside. Just then, the snuffling, whining creature leaps over the tree trunk. My head is full of pain and strange lights. I can't see. I can't move. I curl into a tiny ball. Seconds later, something wet and furry is sniffling and licking my face. I groan. I can't believe that I'm going to die like this. I squint, one eye open. The thing licking me isn't a wild beast at all. It's dog. That's the end of chapter three. There are some more questions for you to answer, which will help you explore uh, some of the effective words and phrases in this chapter. And there's also some activities that you can do after the video. Just click the link in the description and see what they are. Join me next time for chapter four.